Thank you, Reverend Nile. Thank you for that address. I'd now like to welcome our next speaker, the Honourable Luke Foley, Member of the Legislative Council. Uh, the Honourable Luke Foley is a leader of the opposition in the Legislative Council. He's the Shadow Minister for the Environment and Climate Change, Shadow Minister for Planning and Infrastructure. And Mr Foley has rescheduled an appointment to be with us here today, so please give him the attention he deserves. We thank you very much for your time. Uh, bishops, Reverend Fathers, my parliamentary colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to be here today with fellow members of parliament, from state parliament, from the Commonwealth parliament, from the Labor Party, the Liberal Party, the Christian Democratic Party, Australians united, standing up for the rights of the Copts. I was in the Middle East in January. I went to the birthplace of Christ in Bethlehem. I went to the old city in Jerusalem. And like Chris Bowen, I am desperately concerned for Christians throughout the Middle East. It is one of the great moral issues in our world today that people throughout the world stand up for the safety and the rights of Christian communities throughout the Middle East. It was my great privilege to be able to pay tribute in the New South Wales Parliament to His, to His Holiness Pope Shenouda III when he passed. And of course, His Holiness Pope Shenouda led a life of great intellectual and spiritual leadership. He was an inspiring and charismatic advocate for your church. He renewed a sense of identity and pride in your Coptic faith. And it was his vision for the Coptic Church and his desire to see the Coptic Church integrated into a more democratic and proud Egyptian civil society that was given a chance to thrive. Under his leadership, monasteries, an institution that you Copts gave to the world 1,600 years ago, monasteries found themselves overflowing with novices. The intake tripled under Pope Shenouda III. His great, his great legacy was integrating Coptic life with civic life, integrating the Coptic faith with the Abrahamic faiths of all religious denominations. I think back to 1973, when Pope Shenouda was the first Pope of Alexandria to meet with the Pope of Rome in over 1,500 years. And I think of the declaration that the two Popes issued in 1973. And that was a blueprint, a blueprint for describing the open and charitable relationship between faiths, between spiritualities, that makes a great society like Australia so possible. And of course, Pope Shenouda and Pope Paul VI highlighted in that document the central Christian value of charity and articulated how that charity includes so vitally, charity of belief. That is, that a Christian philosophy always includes being charitable in how we accommodate and accept the beliefs of others. And President Morsi and the leaders of Egypt should read that declaration today and they should come to accept that value of charity, that charity of belief that respects the rights of all religious faiths. 
and President Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood must find it within themselves to extend charity of belief to the Copts of Egypt. And of course, friends, Pope Shenouda devoted his writings and teachings and actions to spreading understanding, peace, dialogue and forgiveness. It was his great spiritual and intellectual leadership that in part made Egypt's transition to some sort of democracy possible. But that journey is imperfect and incomplete. Egyptian cops continue to suffer persecution. So today we say, as Australians, that the rights of Christians throughout the Middle East must be respected by governments across the Middle East. And we say that Copts, Coptic Christians, are not simply a religious minority, but are equal members of society. That is the case in this great country called Australia, and it must be the case in the great country of Egypt, and all of us will continue to speak out and continue to campaign until the cops of Egypt, your family members, your loved ones, are equal citizens who proudly and freely can practice their faith and call themselves Coptic. Thank you.